My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 9,005 kilometres so far and I've got 7,594 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits and raised £107,000 for charity. In this episode, we cross two borders, Jamie gets beaten up by a mosquito, we meet some fellow Brits abroad and I continue waging war against the African Asphalt Association. Good morning, Sleeping Beauty. Good morning, bruv. So 30k is yesterday, are you going to try run a little bit today? Yeah. Oh yeah, powered by that hill. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna be able to do it. I'd be surprised if I run the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if I'm, I, I fit. My legs feel slightly better than they do just. That's good at least. You never know. You never know. Such a good going spot. It really is. There's actually nothing better than the bush squat poo. I agree. Mm. If you were to like compare the two, give me a rating out of 10 for a normal toilet and a rating out of 10 for a bush poo. The toilet poo, so you're never going to achieve magic. It's hard to really give it the toilet experience more than like a 6 out of 10, something like that's where it's at its best. Mm. But with the nature poo, the deep squat, surrounded by beautiful nature, sometimes it goes terribly, sometimes you shit on your shoes, but when it goes perfectly, not much better. Magical. It's like at least a Magic. Out of 10. Yeah. Bang, bang. It's a different way to start the run instead. <laughs> it's a man on a mission. <laughs> he arrives, comes out of the shadows from the forests. I don't know if we can see him, but like just behind Russ, on the right of Russ in that hole, there's a Gus with a camera. All right, bruv, see you later. Bang, bang. After dropping off some kiddos and setting them free into the Beninese wilderness, I hit road for the first time today. The past few sessions were plagued with injuries, but this was a new opportunity and I was more than ready to welcome some stompetition. Gus and Jared, however, were embarking on a side quest of their own. Gus and I are on a mission. Sorry, Jamie and I are on a mission. Hello, I'm Jamie. <laughs> um, I bought some other shoes the other day. The sole has come off of both of them a bit, so we need to get it repaired. And all through this, it is raining, which is really, really nice actually. It's only 26 degrees and it's raining. How much is it to fix, Gus? It told me 500, so that's uh, in euros that would be 75 Hello. euro cents. Yeah. I think it's f***ing cheap. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're running, if you see this and you're running a shoe repair shop in, uh, in Africa, why don't you see, see me the next time, even double the price. Like... <laughs> yeah, I'll pay a quid 50, <laughs> I'll pay a euro 50 at least. He just raw dogs I am going to go to the with his finger. No, yeah, he isn't afraid. And I can smell that glue from where I'm standing. Yeah, I'm getting a bit high, I think, from yeah. this two meters. So uh, he must live a good life, <laughs> living that stuff every day. <laughs> So, what do we have in the back of the car here, I guess? We're having some uh, hookahs to give away. Of course, Russ burns down quite a lot of shoes. So, we have the privilege to now and then make people happy with his old shoes. Shoes like this can still have a value of like two quid. That's something uh, that definitely helped these guys out. Innisols are brand new though. Yeah, Innisols are brand, brand new. Because Russ puts his own ones in, so. C'est le cadeau. Merci. C'est magnifique. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, shoe repair guy, very intelligent guy. We give him some shoes for to sell in his shop. He's like, F that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the hook is a fly. <laughs> After Gus and Jared made friends with some locals, they took to the drink to make the most of me operating at a slower pace. The conditions were wet, but for once I was happy to welcome a little tickler drizzle onto my ginger chin fluff. With my locks getting damper by the minute, I met back up with the boys once more. How was the running? Uh, uh, tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> that game, just do be gaming. 
Are right, the new shoes? We gave your your black pair that was done to the um, guys that fixed Gus's shoes this morning. Yeah, but I was so happy, bro. He, straight away, he started like coloring it back, like hitting it with the the, the rejuvenate and everything, yeah, yeah. and he, like put them on. He was like, <laughs> like super happy. They're good shoes, man. Yeah. Really, really good shoes. He was very G. All right, I'm getting in, bruv. Come on in. Come on. Spent a lot of time thinking my legs feel decently, but maybe like a little bit better. A little bit better than yesterday, which gave me a little bit of hope. And now I was thinking about how far there is left to go. It's about seven and a half thousand K. There's eight more countries left to go. But now I was thinking, will this mission ever end? Maybe not. Maybe this is all just an illusion. Maybe we're in a simulation and this is just the... Uh, Africa. <laughs> Africa. Just run, run Africa. Keep running. 7,500 Ks. That's if you're doing 60... <laughs> You don't know. Too many questions, Jared. Yeah, it's not a question, many, it's a statement. Too, too many statements. No more media at this time. I'll put it this way. We're scheduled to end <laughs> after my birthday <laughs> and yours. You'll be turning 27 in Africa. <laughs> now, because what's going to happen is that my body's going to fix itself. And you're going to run like 100 Ks a no, day. I'm going to run like 80. You know, 80 big boy Ks a day. Mm. Um, we might end up taking a couple shortcuts. I think, you know, we could just skirt through Mali. It's not off the table for me. It's not off the table for you either, eh, Gus? No, what's holding us back again? Is there reasons not to... No. A couple, like, wars and that, but... What is different about those wars than the other areas that we've been? None. Nothing, really. With the day drawing to a close, the whole team met back up together where we were given a warm welcome by the village chief. We camped next to his village for the night where he ensured us all that we'd be safe of any humans here, but it turned out that people were the last of my worries. I reckon like 30 mosquitoes in here last night. Unfortunately. Oh, we got some treats for you, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> they were showing us how they made these last night. Um, they were, what, what's it called, yeast, flour, yeah. and ground onion to make the, the paste. Yeah, so, so they're actually very savoury. I'll take a little bit nibble of one. Actually very good. I wish I wasn't so preoccupied, because it would be fun to enjoy the experience of these things a bit more. But I was too far asleep, I think, or trying to sleep. I think trying to sleep. What were you doing last night? I was just murdering mozzies. Yeah, I mean, something got me. My lip is swollen. I can't feel my Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh God. See him? Yeah. That was me, dude. Sorry, I got down. What did you do? It's a dude. Oh. You can't feel it, it's completely numb. Oh, yeah? You look knackered, bro. Yeah. <sighs> You've been a little bit pale. Knackered! Shame. <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. no remorse. Whereas <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we've just found out we're going to be passing the border into Togo. What oh, yeah. very brief hiatus in Benin, but what are your thoughts? Uh, Benin, I think, was so, bad. That city, Cortuno, was pretty sick. Mate. Virgil. It's our friend from last night. He invited us into his village. Yeah. Yeah. He's been staying in front of his house. He's giving me a lot of strong liquor. <laughs> he also likes to share his donuts that his wife makes to sell to the local school children. Run, run, run. Hmm. Lola, ça va faire combien de kilomètres pour lui? How long do you take with this one? Couple hours. Quelques heures. Il est sûr qu'il va marcher comme ça jusqu'à aller en Côte d'Ivoire. Oui, on besoin, on besoin. Explaining them like we have to do hard things like this because our life is already too easy. Mm. Like <laughs> silly white man things. Right. See you later. It be that time. <laughs> bang bang. Bang bang. Bang bang. Russell. Bang bang on the up on the right. Bang to the bang, and I was off on the ones and twos. After slaughtering a whole squadron of flying demons last night, I was ready to gobble up another soul today, this time being a boneless Beninese banquet. Back at camp, Gus, Jared and Jamie were taken to an old transportation bridge by the village chief that we met last night. So it used to be a tall bridge. Oh yeah? Uh, but yeah, nowadays of course it's a nice Tarmac bridge, so no need for this one anymore. So is this the original main road, the national road? Yeah, this used to be the old national road. What year was it made? Like roundabout? Probably like 100 years. Wow. You say it's interesting to see the remnants of, of colonization. Yeah, like to see how it's actually stood up time, because it really hasn't. 
but they're still using this bridge for like the small towns. Yeah. You know, people build their homes along the, the way of like shipping. And then obviously when it falls apart, they can't just pick up and move to the new road when they build the new road. Yeah. So they still have to be able to use it. But like, like look at this, there's gaps all the way through, you know, and motorbikes are still using this. Despite there being gaps the size of Jack Russell's to manoeuvre through, the lads managed to get back safe and sound to sample some local refreshments before heading into Togo. Nice. Okay. So it's yeah. maize juice. Maize juice. Maize juice. Well, that's delicious. Really? Wow. Is it cold too? It's freezing cold. Oh, it tastes like iced tea. Yeah. That's good. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. We cook it. Cook it? Cook it. And you put sugar? Yeah, they don't book Really good. Yeah. It's very nice. It's a lovely yeah. packaging too. It's very cute. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, welcome. Is this for us? Yes. Yeah, ah, merci, merci. Our short time in Benin had come to a close and we'd successfully made it through the Togolese border without any hiccups. I was excited to see a bit of new tarmac and I immediately penciled in an appointment late notice to destroy some of that gob gravel. Russell? It's that camera again. Whoa. What's your pers personality for Togo going to be? Batman. Vibes. What have you heard about Togo? You heard anything? Emmanuel Adebayo is from here. Who? Neither of you will know who that is. No. Does he play soccer? Yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't <laughs> play soccer. What else do I know about Togo? They have a really good surf spot. So we're crossing fingers and hoping Russ will break down and get injured for two weeks <laughs> within the next five days. I promise we didn't speak about hitting you with the car so we can go <laughs> surfing. <laughs> Ready to bang bang the open road. Road do be getting smashed in. Togo doesn't know what's about to hit it, bro. Oh, he's gonna get f caved in. It's gonna be ferocious 10 meters. The so rest of 10 meters ever in Togo, bro. Ooh! In 1922, the first tarmac road in Kenya. Oh, a 20 meter long test strip was bit bitumenized. Never heard seeing that word. And soon the center of Nairobi was almost tarmacked. By 1930, asphalt had spread to other towns such as Mombasa, Nakuru, Eldoret, and Kasumu. That is interesting. That's well interesting. Come on out. Give us your fighting warm up. What song would you walk out to? And what's your walkout song? Walkout song right now. Hmm. Baby, tell me if you like it. Tell me if you like it. <laughs> you know what? I do. Cassie, me and you. <laughs> Au revoir. Bonne journée. With the Togolese asphalt quaking in their pathetic little boots, I was thinking of making that move now by telling them just how I like it. Long, hard and merciless. <laughs> Either from the receptionist just told us to come with him. Which way is it? Hey, up? Oh, you put up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's a whole Holy thing. shit. Yeah, Some balls for you to get on game. <laughs> yeah, boy. Let me just find <laughs> Wow. Look at the highlight. And we get pizza tonight. And we get pizza, man. Togo has been a treat so far. Look how beautiful the moon is as well. Full moon. Oh yeah. So Russ, any exciting plans for today? So many exciting plans, Gus. Like what? Like what? We're gonna go to Ghana! Do we even have visas for Ghana? No. Oh sh**. What are we gonna do about that? You cannot get them on the border according to the Ghanaian government. However, the word is going with a bit of uh, help of Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. Oh, good pal. Yeah. So he good. So good to us, isn't he? Cool, so we're gonna go meet Benji at the border and then see if he can help us get through. I feel like it was just yesterday I spoke to you about crossing into a new country and now we're crossing into a new country. It's crazy how time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. How are the leggies going? Terrible. I mean, I see them, they're still there at least. Yeah, they're, mate, can you, do, you, do they look swollen to you? They're not as vascular, so yeah, a little bit. They're normally quite vascular in your calves. Yeah, f swollen and puffy. Hmm. Big man goose. He's always doing something, can he? He is he always doing right something. Having a photo cam, going out. Nice photo. Man on a mission. Man on a mission, dude. Mission old. Man on a mission, dude. Mission in. Woke up this morning, he's just got coconuts with a machete. Just yeah. 
Last night he came in after like a 10k run. First challenge James to see what his fastest 10k run is to see how he is at running in his words. And then insisted that Jamie push down in his shoulders rather aggressively while he does like H-I-T push-ups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man's a machine, dude. Bro, I need to Okay, bye-bye. See you at the border. Excited at the prospect of seeing our third border in a matter of days, I was still some way away from there, but I hit pace regardless. Everyone else got their early doors to meet our mate Ben to see if we could come to some sort of an agreement. That border was long, dude. You guys came like a little bit later. Gus and I have yeah, been true. there since half past nine. I mean, Gus did organize all the visas when we arrived, so that's what took us long as well. The guy insisted, no, it's $150 each. Um, that, that leaves nothing for him. So you can give him a tip if you want. If the other guy was here, he would charge us $200. Uh, we checked the receipts. We checked the receipts. The receipt said $95 each. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marley for Christmas. Uh, Marley for Christmas. I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure. You're pretty keen on it, aren't you? Super keen. Why exactly is that? Is that just because it's short? It knocks a thousand k's off the roof. Mm. Say no more. I just looked up this morning, the roof left at the moment is like 7,900 k's. Yeah. This room is like 6,800 k's. Mm. What do you think about Mali? Mali is a beautiful country and I think... What do you know about Mali, Russ? What do I know about Mali? I know it's got some of the most historical trade routes in the world. It's got the famous Timbuktu. We wouldn't be going there, but um, sure. it's, it's there. Most of the problems in Mali, which there is a few documented, a large majority of those uh, problems are towards the east and the north of the country and we'd only be going through the south and the west, so it's good enough for me, bruv. I passed through Stompton to deliver some more catastrophic lower body blows to yet another West African lane. With spending most of our day at the border, there wasn't much road left for me today, so we pitched up for our first slumber on Ghanaian soil. It's that time of the day again. It is, bruv. It's relentless, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Oh. Things are going downhill. <laughs> What's more important in the morning? Picking an outfit or brushing the beard? Brushing the beard. Brushing the beard. What do you do with your beard other than brush it? Not much. I'm quite convinced, yeah. Bit of hashtag science for everyone. Okay. That if you want to grow a beard, go and do some exercise and your beard will grow. That's what James is such yeah. a small beard. That bro science, yeah. I suppose what is building some testosterone in your body. What's going to happen with the beard when you're back? I'm keeping it long. I'm just going to become the next Dumbledore. The next Dumbledore? Chin or something. What are you hiding? Uh, secrets. There's something going on under yeah. there, innit? The, the crimson chin hiding yeah. away, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I forgot we own this thing and I have PRV. to. PRV. Like... Oh. Is that in, is my beard just, is it just getting all beard or what? No, it's good. I think it's just so wide that it catches beard no matter where. You can put it on your belly button and it'll catch beard. <laughs> yeah. I think it's okay though. Is it on, yeah? Yeah, it's on. Is this thing on? Is it on, bruv? <laughs> Russ, get on the road. 18 minutes ago, we were like, let's get going. Yeah, I was just, look. Uh, Are you still rolling? I kind of gave it up at like 18 minute roll, dude. Oh my, yeah, 18 minutes, bro. Because <laughs> the thing is, he'll just stand up and go as well. Like, he'll just be like, done. All right, with I'm going. All right, f off. Podcasts now. <laughs> I think it's you who needs to f off this issue. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye, Rush. See you in 30. It was only right that I whacked on the local colours for my first outing over here and away I went for the day. My hand was forced to have a few shorter days with border passings in recent days. However, I was a happy geezling to be able to consume big boy numbers on a daily basis all over again. It was scorching hot out there and I was relieved to see the Jays at the 25k mark. Welcome girls and boys to Project Africa. I'm on my break and I've got jelly tots. 30k done, it is well up. I'm going to go and run another 30 now. Also, we found another Brummy, didn't we, James? He's gone. Apparently so. We're going to go and say hello to them. Wow. It's actually so weird to see Brummy. Which one's the Brummy? I found it. How are you? Okay, good. So what are you guys doing now, Adam? Uh, we're out here for a year. Yeah, we're teaching in a, in a school. Well, not far away. Just... How are you doing, what? 
Yeah, yeah. be nice. Yeah. 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 Sense of timber. Yeah. yeah. What made you want to do this? I think just different culture. Yeah, definitely. We get totally immersed, and obviously do it for a long period of time. Yeah. And not just like two or three months. So like. Okay. Oh, someone's editing. Jamie's editing. I regret it. See, though, you got all the beds at the back. Oh, is that what you sleep? Yeah, well, I don't sleep there. Oh. I sleep in the other rooms. What advice would you give to someone that wants to do a similar thing to you guys are doing now? I don't really plan it. Actually, get going. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think yeah, that's, really that's nice. action. Yeah. Just do it. Do Figure it out. Like it. It. Yeah. yeah, like sort it out. You can sort out as you go along. And uh, what would be something that you should kind of be aware of before coming into something like this? You've got to be very open to what you're going to see. Obviously, we've seen lots of different things to what even other volunteers that are in like a catch in like half an hour away from here have seen. So I think you have just got to be so open to anything. What's the process from like concept to actually getting here? Uh, it's an organisation that works with gap year students. And do you, you get told that. where you go in, and then you can accept or decline it? Yeah, yeah. What were your top mm. choices? What did you go for? I think I said anywhere. I didn't really mind. <laughs> Just get me out. <laughs> <laughs> I went on road, got thirty dusted. Now we're going to go number thirty. Mm. What do you think about that, James? Sounds like fighting talk. Damn, right, it's fighting. I can see the tarmac trembling already. Look at yeah, it. You see it trembling? Whoa. <laughs> Russ, this is your time to say like, comment, subscribe and oh. hit notification bell. Like, comment and subscribe with notification bell. You smash it like I smashed Tarmac. It really supports the channel and we would really appreciate it if you did that for us girls and boys. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag get Russ to Tunisia. Get Russ to Tunisia! <laughs> <coughs> In the next episode, we enter Accra, I almost drown in a pool, and we share a jar or two with some supporters of the mission.